بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم فار ایگزامپل سائنوجینک گلائکوسائڈس ریلیز دا پوائزن ہائیڈروجن سائنائڈ ویریس نائٹروجنس پروٹیکٹو کمپاؤنڈس ادر دین الکلائڈس آر فاؤنڈ ان پلانٹس ٹو گروپ آف دیز سبسٹینسز آر سائنوجینک گلائکوسائڈس اینڈ گلوکوسینولیٹس دے آر ناٹ ان دیم سیلف ٹاکسک بٹ آر ریڈلی بروکن ٹو گیو آف ولٹائل poisons when the plant is crushed cyanogenic glycosides release the well known poisonous gas cyanide the breakdown of cyanogenic glycosides in plant is a two step enzymatic process species that make cyanogenic glycosides also make the enzymes necessary to hydrolyze the sugar and liberate hydrogen cyanide In the first step the sugar is cleaved by a glycosidase an enzyme that separates sugars from other molecules to which they are linked in the second step the resulting hydrolysis product called an a hydro hydroxy nitrile or cyanohydrin can decompose spontaneously at a low rate to liberate hydrogen cyanide This second step can be accelerated by the enzyme hydroxy nitrile. You can see in this step, these are the equations indicating these breakdown processes. Enzyme catalyzed hydrolysis of cyanogenic glycoside to release hydrogen cyanide. R and R dash represent various alkyl or aryl substitute substituents respectively. For example, if R is phenyl, R dash is a hydrogen, and the sugar is the disaccharide beta ganotiobiose. The compound in amygdalin, the common the compound is amygdalin, the common cyanogenic glycoside found in the seeds of almonds, apricots, cherries, and peaches. so in this slide you can see how the hydrolysis process of glycosides occur and hydrogen cyanide is released from these compounds hydrolysis of glucosinolates to mustard smelling volatiles uh, if you have if you have smelled mustard oil you will feel a pungent smell that is due to glucosinolates these compounds are not toxic in nature by themselves or these are readily broken down to other compounds which are toxic in this slides you are uh, you are seeing the breakdown or hydrolysis of glucosinolates r represents various alkyl or aryl substituents for example if r is propene the compound is syngreen a major glucosinolate of black mustard seeds and horse radish roots cyanogenic glucosides are not normally broken down in the intact plant because the glycosides and the degradative enzymes are specially separated in different cellular compartments or in different tissues in sorghum for example the cyanogenic glycoside uh, durin is present in the vacuoles of epidermal cells while the hydrolytic and lytic enzymes are found in the under ordinary conditions this compartmentation prevents decomposition of the glycoside when the leaf is damaged however as during herbivore feeding now in the next slide you will you will be seeing uh, the word herbivore or herbivory so this this is the process or process of eating plants by different insects the insects which eat the plants are known as herbivores herb is from plant and vores to eat so the insects or other organisms which eat plants are known as known as herbivores and this process is known as herbivory the cell content of different tissue mix and hydrogen cyanide forms cyanogenic glycosides are widely distributed in the plant kingdom and are frequently encountered in legumes grasses and species of the rose family 
considerable evidence indicates that cyanogenic glycosides have a protective function in certain plants hydrogen cyanide is a fast acting toxin that inhibits metallo metalloproteins such as the iron containing cytochrome oxidase a key enzyme of mitochondrial respiration so uh, so the breakdown of glycosides releases hydrogen cyanide gas which is toxic for different proteins which are key proteins in plant processes the presence of cyanogenic glycosides deters feeding by insects and other herbivores such as snails and slugs as with other classes of secondary metabolites however some herbivores have adapted to feed on cyanogenic plants and can tolerate large doses of cyanide the tubers of cassava manihot esculenta a high carbohydrate staple food in many tropical countries contain high level of cyanogenic glycosides traditional processing methods such as grating grinding soaking and drying lead to the removal of or degradation of large function of the cyanogenic glycoside present in the cassava tube however chronic cyanide poisoning leading to partial paralysis of the limbs is still widespread in region where cassava is a major food source because the traditional detoxification methods employed to remove cyanogenic glycosides from cassava are not completely effective in addition many populations that consume cassava have poor nutrition which aggravates the effects of the cyanogenic glycosides there are many countries which use cassava as staple food like we do with wheat in our country if these populations eat cassava there are toxic compounds which affect their nutrition and health efforts are currently underway to reduce the cyanogenic glycoside content of cassava through both conventional breeding and genetic engineering approaches however the complete elimination of cyanogenic glycosides may not be desirable because these substances are probably responsible for the fact that cassava can be stored for very long periods of time without attack by pests for different these products function in defense as herbivore toxins and feeding repellents like cyanogenic glycosides glucosinolates are stored in the intact plant separately from the enzymes that hydrolyze them and they are brought into contact with these enzymes only when the plant is crushed as with other secondary metabolites certain animals are adapted to feed on glucosinolate containing plants without ill effects for adapted herbivores such as the cabbage butterfly glucosinolates often serve as stimulants for feeding and egg-laying and the isothiocyanates produced after glucosinolate hydrolysis act as volatile attractants so from these slides we understand that these are not only toxic to other organisms but they also are beneficial for other organisms for example the glucosinolates stimulate feeding of egg laying stimulate feeding of cabbage butterfly and promote egg laying most of the recent research on glucosinolates in plant defense has concentrated on rape or canola a major oil crop in both north america and europe plant breeders have tried to layer the lower the glucosinolate levels of rape seed so that the high protein seed meal remaining after oil extraction can be used as animal food the first low glucosinolate varieties tested in the field were unable to survive because of severe pest problems however more recently developed varieties with low glucosinolate level in seeds but high glucosinolate level in leaves are able to hold their own against pests and still provide a protein rich seed residues for animal feeding non protein amino acids defend against herbivores 
now we will be seeing that there are some amino acids which are non protein in nature but they defend plants against different herbivores plants and animals incorporate the same 20 amino acids into their proteins however many plants also contain unusual amino acids called non protein amino acids that are not incorporated into proteins but are present instead in the free form and act as protective substances. Non protein amino acids are often very similar to common protein amino acids. Cannabinin, for example, is a close analog of arginine, and acetidine, two carboxylic acid, has a structure very much like that of proline. In this slide, you can see that non-protein amino acids and their protein amino acids analog. The non-protein amino acids are not incorporated into, pro into proteins but are defensive compounds found in free form in plants. Non-protein amino acids exert their toxicity in, in various ways. Some block the synthesis or uptake of protein amino acids. Others such as cannabinin can be mistakenly incorporated into proteins. After ingestion, cannabinin is recognized by the herbivore enzyme that normally binds arginine to the arginine transfer RNA molecule. So it becomes incorporated into proteins in place of arginine. The usual result is a non-functional protein because either it, its tertiary structure or its catalytic site is disrupted. Cannabinin is less basic than arginine and may alter the ability of an enzyme to bind substrates or catalyze chemical reactions. Plants that synthesize non-protein amino acids are not susceptible to the toxicity of these compounds. The jack bean Cannabellia ensiformis, which synthesizes large amount of cannabinin is in its seeds has protein synthesizing machinery that can discriminate between cannabinin and arginine and it does not incorporate cannabinin into its own proteins. Some insects that specialize on plant containing non-protein amino acids have similar biochemical adaptation. Some plant proteins inhibit herbivore digestion. Among the diverse components of plant defense Arsenalas are proteins that interfere with herbivore digestion. For example, some legumes synthesize alpha amylase inhibitors that block the action of the starch digesting enzyme alpha amylase. Other plant species produce lectins, defensive protein that bind to carbohydrates or carbohydrate containing proteins. After being ingested by an herbivore, lectins bind to the epithelial cells lining the digestive tract and interfere with nutrient absorption. The best known anti-digestive protein in plants are the pro proteinase inhibitors found in legumes, tomatoes and other plants. These substances block the action of herbivore proteolytic enzymes. After entering the herbivore's digestive tract, they bind, they, they hinder protein digestion by binding tightly and specifically to the active site of protein hydrolyzing enzymes such as tyrip, tyripsin and chymotrypsin. Insects that feed on plant containing proteinase inhibitors suffer reduced rates of growth and development that can be offset by some supplemental amino acids in the defensive role of proteinase inhibitors has been confirmed by experiments with transgenic tobacco. Plants that had been transformed to accumulate increased level of proteinase inhibitors suffered less damage from insect herbivores than did under untransformed control plants. Herbivore damage triggers a complex signaling pathway. Proteinase inhibitors and certain other defenses are not continuously present in the plants but are synthesized only after initial herbivore or pathogen attack. In tomatoes, insect feeding leads to the rapid accumulation of proteinase inhibitors throughout the plant even in an undamaged areas far from the initial feeding. 
the system the systemic production of proteinase inhibitors in young tomato plants is triggered by a complex sequence of events wounded tomato tomato leaves synthesize prostamin a large precursor protein prostamin is proteolytically processed to produce the short polypeptide called cystamin the first polypeptide hormone discovered in cystamin is released from damaged cell into the apoplast cystamin is then transported out of the wounded leaf via the phloem in target cell cystamin is believed to bind to a site on the plasma membrane and initiate the biosynthesis of jasmonic acid a plant growth regulator that has wide range jasmonic jasmonic acid eventually activates the expression of genes that encode proteinase inhibitors other signals such as abscisic acid salicylic acid and pectin fragments from damaged plant cell wall also appear to participate in this wound signal cascade but their specific roles are clear in this slide you can see proposed signaling pathway for the rapid induction of proteinase inhibitors biosynthesis in wounded tomato plants thank you